How do you expect you. this? How do you see this playing out? Are you and your colleagues within the Finnish government now preparing for what looks like an invasion of Ukraine by Russia? Well, of course, in this kind of circumstances, we have to be ready for everything. And, and uh, we just had our EU ministers meeting in, in Brest in, in France, where we discussed the unity of European Union in these circumstances. And of course, there will be a strong reaction by European Union if any violent attacks against Ukraine will happen. But uh, I think the door for diplomacy is still open, and it's very important to use that. But would Finland actually realistically join NATO at some point? And you're a very, very able communicator, you know, a, a peace broker. Do you feel left out because it's very clear that Russia wants to go through the NATO route instead of talking to the EU? Well, in our security thinking, the possibility of choosing yourself if you are allied or non-allied is a very important principle. And this, uh, of course, includes the possible uh, membership of NATO one day for Finland. Currently, we are not discussing about that. We have a very close partnership with NATO, like Sweden has, and we are training together with NATO and, and so forth. But uh, we don't accept any uh, thinking of uh, spares of influence in Europe, where countries are divided uh, and, and, and so forth. Every country has the right to choose their uh, uh, if they are allied or non-allied, and this includes also Finland. But, sir, if you look at what Vladimir Putin says, and this is their logic, is that NATO was created essentially to deter Russia and it's anti-Russia. If uh, countries in Europe had the amount of military that Russia has at its doorstep, you would react the same way. Do you buy that argument that NATO and potentially also your country, geographically speaking, could be a problem for Russia? Do you see it from the Moscow perspective? Well, from our perspective, NATO has increased the security in uh, Europe and also in the Baltic Sea region. If we, for example, look at the NATO membership of the Baltic states, which has made their defense stronger and, and, so, and so forth, it has been a positive uh, phenomenon on the security of the Baltic, Baltic region. And uh, that's for the Baltics, but of course, uh, Germany has a big say in this. We're seeing a big diplomatic effort uh, this week. But you do know, you talked about unity in the EU, but you do know that behind the scenes, uh, that unity sometimes is being called into question. Many member states believe that a lot of this, it's the fault of Angela Merkel and the appeasement that she had towards Russia. Is it time for Berlin to say we're not going to deal with Putin the way we have and Nord Stream, by the way, gets ditched? If you look actually the positions of European Union, I, I think this autumn was a very good example when, when Belarus created the pressure on the Polish border and Baltic states border and, and, and so forth. European Union reacted very, in a very united way and, and in a very uh, strong solidarity with Poland and, and Baltic states when the border was threatened. And I, but, I sir, think but, sir, in, but sir, but sir, but sir, but sir, in in December the EU countries agreed for massive sanctions on Ukraine. Two months later, we still don't know what massive means. So that unity at times is hard to see where it's coming from. We have a strong coordination between European Union and, and U.S. on these issues. And of course, when you prepare that kind of issues, you don't prepare them. Those in, in public, uh, everything depends on the on the uh, coming events. And of course, we are very concerned also on the recent cyber attack against Ukraine and many European countries. So the solidarity and also technical support to Ukraine on this case. OK, Minister, in terms of the response then, should the EU, should NATO members consider the question of removing Russia from the SWIFT payment system? There have been some reports that maybe that's in question now. Should that at least be on the table? And should you also be considering, given those cyber attacks, technology embargoes of Russia? Well, I don't want to go to speculation what kind of sanctions and what kind of united reaction Europe will have. Of course, this is something that is under preparation and, and uh, not needed to speculate now. But of course, all, all issues are uh, at the table at the moment. Regarding the cyber attacks, I think it's very, very important that Ukraine gets the technical help that they need to, to find out what has happened, but also to support their cyber own cyberspace and, and, and their independence in that, but that minister... way as well. It, it does seem that the West is often on a back foot when dealing with President Putin. If you freeze out Russia, the SWIFT payment, this would be a nuclear option. Do we need to keep that on the table to make sure that the West doesn't ta be taken advantage of and, and be taken seriously? 
well as said, I don't want to speculate because there are many, many sectors that can influence uh, also Russia and, and, and trade between EU and, and Russia in many, many ways. But uh, everything is depending, of course, how the develop uh, on, on the Russia Ukraine. In terms of tone, do we need to up our rhetoric against Russia? Well, currently, I, I, th I think the messages have been very clear. The NATO Russia Council uh, discussed these issues. Uh, there is a coming meeting between the US and, and, and Russia in Geneva and so forth. And, and it is still time for the diplomacy, as I said. And, sir, you mentioned diplomacy. Of course, for diplomacy, you have to know what the other side is thinking. In your mind, what is Vladimir Putin playing at? Is this about Ukraine? Is this about the greatness of the Russian nation, a Tsar Putin? Or is this just about a military deterrence? What is he doing now? Why is he doing this at this point? Well, very many issues are depending on the on the future of uh, conflict areas in Ukraine and in Donbas. And we have uh, currently, of course, the Minsk agreements that should be followed, and, and there should be pressure also towards Russia to follow the steps of the Minsk agreements. And I think this is the way to go out from this uh, crisis that we find a permanent solution for Donbas.